Hi everybody, I'm a Christian and this is Lazy Death Academy and welcome to our PQA tutorial. Look at this. I am so proud of our, our procedural generation now. So with the press of a button, we can make a dungeon appear out of nothing. Oh, great. Is it a good dungeon? Mm, let's not talk about the quality of our dungeon. It's not necessarily a good dungeon. I already discussed this at the end of the last episode. It doesn't really... It's not really well interconnected. It doesn't really make for up for a good dungeon. Generally, it, it's more of a snake kind of dungeon. It's it's a long snack. And at any given point, you may have some decisions. For example, here in this in this room, I have a decision to go right or, or up. So there's a decision. But none of those decisions are like they will always eventually I will uh, end in, in a dead end. There's never a situation where I maybe come back to a place where I've already been. And this is kind of like something that I found myself like that, that's, that's kind of odd. Because when people talk about level design, they talk um, about, you know, how backtracking is bad. How being like in a spot that you've been before is bad. And I wouldn't. Pr I would probably um, argue against it. It's fine to visit um, places that you've already been to, as long as you're not actually like just like turning around and going the same way that you went, because that feels like a waste of time. If you're just turning around and going immediately backwards, the the way you just went into into something, because then you ask yourself, why did I go into here, right? Uh, however, if you like break out and come out of, of a door that you saw previously that you decide not to go through like kind of like you know dark souls have this demon souls even actually start out with this where it's like you know you explore some kind of dungeon and you open a door and it's like oh, i'm all the way at the beginning now you know that's actually a really great moment that actually feels really good even though you it seems like you all your progress has been destroyed it seems like it, your progress was destroyed but in fact it's a really good moment because then suddenly you know uh, this exploration, this journey into some some far away, uh, turns into the journey back to the beginning. Like it closes up a space, it creates like a um, like a loop. Your mind thinks that we're very far away and very murky are suddenly very clear because they suddenly they're a lot nearer to your uh, starting point than they were previously. Maybe a bit more metaphysical explanation. Um, but yeah, uh, it's actually a good thing. My argument is actually a good thing if you loop back to the to the beginning somehow. And so we want to teach our our procedural generation algorithm to um, to recognize that and be like, okay, let us break through some of the walls um, that even though now everything is interconnected and we can guarantee that we can get into every nook and cranny, let us continue this process and let us start actually carving some walls. Um, in where you know where um you where you will create a shortcut where previously it might have been very difficult to get into but now it's very easy for example here is a very good one look we're going to be starting in this room if i break this wall plop, then i can you know go all the way up here and down there but also i can go here and then that will kind of create like a big loop and that's not bad that's that's good. That's something we could do. Another good one would maybe something like here would be also nice. So everything is a bit more interconnected. And we saw that when we designed the, our test level, we had like a nice interconnected level that was really good. That that was fun. So we're going to use a very similar. We're going to use a very similar function that to the one that we already used before. You remember your last episode? We did this long function that checked for the flag be um, in front and behind a wall. And if there were different ones, you know, it would add it to a candidates list and then so forth. We're going to use a very similar function to find out what good shortcuts would be. We're going to call them shortcuts. Um, and the thing is, what is a good shortcut? Well, we don't want to just like destroy any wall, right? It's, we don't want to just like, maybe there's a good example here. Okay, let's, so let's see. Carving from here upwards, like making a breakthrough like this, that wouldn't be that great of a shortcut, wouldn't it? Because there's just like a door right next to it. That wouldn't actually do anything for us. It's, it, that doesn't move the needle, so to speak. Um, even carving a door like this is like, okay, okay, I guess now it's like this little loop, but you know, I loop back again, that doesn't really do much. But you know, carving something like here, Okay, that's good because then now it's like this big loop that I created up here and down here. Like the loop that we want to be creating is, should be supposed to be big. 
So we kind of like, instead of looking uh, what connects two areas, we want to make sure that the, the door that we're carving connects two places that are far away in terms of how many steps you would otherwise need to, uh, to use in order to get to that place. And if that sounds familiar, it's that because it's supposed to sound familiar. This sounds like a distance function. So we're going to do something that kind of makes me actually think about because this carved door function, we're going to just copy this one. And we're not going to call it carved doors, but carve short cuts. Let's call them short carve cuts. S cuts, shortcuts, scuts, carve scuts. I like it. <laughs> uh, carve scuts. Okay, we're gonna carve scuts. And again, very similar function and, and functionality. Uh, also gonna use kind of like the same um, signature test and will also give us, you know, like a, a space in front and space behind. So everything else, everything will be, will be the same. But afterwards, we're not gonna look for the flags. That's not something we're gonna look for. Instead, we're gonna measure the distance between x1, y1, and x2, y2. We're gonna measure the distance between the, sp the spot in front of the wall and the spot behind of the wall. And if the distance between those two spots is really great, that means that might be a good uh, shortcut candidate. And if the distance between those two spots is kind of like meh, just like a couple of walks, like then that means that it's just like a wall that has a door nearby anyway. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna um, make everything. So let's delete all of the stuff that is um, not necessary for our for this. We don't need those flags anymore. And in fact, we don't need those flags anymore. And we don't need those flags anymore. We actually don't even need to save those flags in here. That's 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 all of this is gone. No no flagging anymore. We don't need a, a, those variables for flags. None of this is necessary anymore. It's fine. Uh, also, we actually don't need to uh, when you draw the, the game, we don't need to draw the flags on, on we, the flags are done for. We, we used our flags. It's fine. The flags are okay. We can later on we can clear that array, that flag array that doesn't actually do anything for us. <coughs> Okay, so what I want to be doing now is um, I'm going to say like if found then. Okay, we found a thing and then I'm, uh, I'm going to create a dist map. Uh, I think it was called calc dist map. It's gameplay, right? Calc dist map. Calc dist. Yeah, there we go. Bam. I'm going to calculate distance um, between, between, um, x1, uh, 2x1, 2x1, okay, and then we're gonna see, we're gonna only add this as a possible candidate to our door list, only in those situations where this distance is great enough. Uh, what is a good enough distance? Well, through trial and error, we can like try some other things, but it's like, if uh, how do I call the array again? Just making sure that I... It, it's called dist map, right? So if dist map... Now we're looking at the position on the other side of the door. So it's like x2, y2. Uh, let's try 5. If it's greater than 5. Then, in this case, we're adding as a, as a possible door. As a possible door. Uh, we're not actually going to carve these for now. I'm not going to loop. We're just going to loop this through this once, just once. Uh, and I'm going to do an M set here. M set, uh, and I'm going to color the doors that are pos that are good candidates for for the breakthrough. So it's going to M set um, underscore X underscore Y three like this. Okay. Okay. So. We have some candidates, but they're actually really bad. <laughs> I'm not sure why they're so bad. Let me think about this real quick. That they're horrible. That those are horrible breakthroughs. 
why why is that something that it, it thought it was a good idea did i mix up x and, two, and x1 and what did i do here awkward awkward i um i started editing the wrong function yikes uh so let's edit this guy out and let's rename this oh that's that's very awkward that's very awkward uh this will require some manipulation yikes yikes okay so now it's it uh, highlighted those um doors as possible ones so let's let's bring it down to five again so this should highlight yeah this now highlights a lot of the things five is 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 you know is a lot so let's bring it up to 10. So you see now uh, it still highlights a lot, but now there's like certain, like for example, I'm still not, I don't think there should be a door here going up. That's That doesn't seem like a good shortcut, right? So let's go 15. Okay. Okay. That's actually not bad. This is not bad. There is like, for example, this wall that might be still, that is still a bit closed because we make a breakthrough here. That kind of makes like this entire hallway a bit pointless. So I'm not sure about that. So let's see, like I had originally had 20 as, as the, the cutoff point. And that actually just leaves just very few shortcuts, just like really major breakthroughs. Like here, for example, would be a good one and here. And that's actually, that might be a good one. You have to kind of figure out, maybe 18 would be good. Maybe maybe it's, this is a bit too zealous. The only problem is like it, if eventually it, um, it kind of cuts out most of the possibilities. So then that's kind of like not, not nice. But, but I'm gonna stay with 20 because that's something that they derived um, during my exploration. Okay. So created now this this map, we're adding the possible doors in our list of candidates, um, but only doors that are have a certain distance. And again, if you leave it down to just one, then we're gonna get, you know, oops, we haven't actually, if we set it to one, then, you know, all of the walls would get marked, you know, as possible uh, shortcuts. That's obviously not something that we want. So 20 is a good, good, good cutoff. Okay, so now let's make it so that it actually starts carving the, the door in here. That's gonna be enough. There's not, not much to it. Um, and then just um, the, the loop is now the problem. So um, how long are we gonna continue with this process? As we saw, um, if we just do it once, then the chance that the next time, you know, we saw that the, the cutoff of 20 already takes care of most most of the, like this, it just nails, um, narrows down the possible shortcuts to so just a very, very few. Um, so we can just continue this process until it doesn't really find any shortcuts that would would satisfy this condition. So we, we could do that. But also we could maybe also say that um, it, after we did a certain amount of cuts, we stop it. Like after three shortcuts, we, we can we can be like, okay, that's enough. Um, and so I'm gonna make that maybe. So it's gonna be um, here, cut, found, and then it's gonna be zero. And every time we make a cut, um, we add one to it. And if doors equals zero or cuts um, is equal, um, cut, cut, is it cut? Yeah, is, is greater than zero, uh, greater than, greater or equals three, then we're gonna stop this. Um, is it just there then? Oh no, there's an equals missing here. Um, yeah, okay. That's it. And you don't really see anymore where the shortcut was, so we're not really sure where the shortcut is. It's somewhere, right? It's somewhere along this this entire process. It, it made a shortcut, uh, and this results in a more more way more interesting um, dungeon. We can even test this dungeon and walk through this dungeon a little bit. Uh, if we um, set the blank map to one, that allows us to kind of like explore our dungeon. Ooh. And you can see that this is a lot more interesting. There, we still see some problems here. This is stupid. What is this? Like maybe if there was a treasure at the end, that would be interesting. But otherwise, that wasn't a very, very interesting location. Also, these kind of nook and crannies. These don't. Or this. What is this? This looks stupid as well. Not sure about this huge hallway here either. 
Oh, I'm, st I'm still in micro mode. It's kind of funny that we created like this this little loop here. That's okay. And then yeah, we have created like a little dungeon. And you can see like the dungeon was also nice and interconnected. If interconnected, if at the beginning we went went here, we'd explore this dungeon from a very very different uh, point of view. Excellent, love it, so good. Good. What now? So we notice that these the, this map generates like these weird nook and crannies. They are weird. They don't look that great. This is because a worm was very, you know, active and tried to like worm itself into all sorts of different like nook and crannies. And this is great because it allowed us like to create like these kind of like hallways that will like break through to some interesting rooms, but it also creates like a lot of dead ends that are kind of like pointless. So it would be nice maybe to have like a function that kind of like takes care of like all of the superfluous little like, you know, uh, Baroque exits. Let's do that. Uh, we're gonna call this function fill ends. And it's gonna be kind of a backwards worm. You will see. We're gonna call this fill ends. Function fill ends, okay? And it's going to be a very similar uh, situation, a very similar pattern to we saw previously. We're going to have repeat, and we are going to look for some candidates for candidates that are dead ends. Candidates, and we're going to until um, hashtag canned uh, equals zero. We're going to just fill in the ends until we don't have any. What are we going to do? Uh, how are we going to look for the ends? Well, we're going to loop through the entire map. And we're going to do something un something unusual, but something that's actually makes a lot of sense if you think about it. So what is a dead end? What is a dead end? A dead end could be a... Um, it is a... A tile that is walkable, so let's go if is walkable, that's definitely the case. Um, and, well, now it's like kind of like there's like multiple ways of thinking about this. Uh, I think a similar test um, that is def will definitely work, and that's how I did it last time around, is uh, a dead end is a tile that only has one cardinal exit one location to this cardinal exit. So it's kind of like, if you reach that tile, there's only one way to reach it and one way to exit it. A tunnel is the one tile that has two exits or cardinal locations, so like this or like this, you know, like these kind of like exits, you know. And you know, when you have, when you have like uh, exits four, uh, three or four different locations, it's kind of like you're in a room or at a crossing or whatever. But if it's just, there's just one exit there, that means that this is a dead end and we should probably uh, show them edit. But I think, I'm not sure, but I think we can, funny enough, we can use also the can carve function. Although this one uses is walkable. Ah, oh, bad. That's bad. Maybe if we remove this, uh, we can actually, we might be able to repurpose the can carve function. The can carve function usually checks for. Um, but because what the can carve function actually does is makes sure that if you carve in this spot, you won't create a hallway, you will create a dead end. That's what the can, can carve function does. So if we use the same function, can carve x and y, we should, should get a, I'm sorry for the sniffling, we should get a, um, um, we should cover the dead ends. If we use the same function on walkable tiles, we should get, kind of, we, we're basically undoing what the worm was doing um, and only leaving those parts of that the worm carved out that actually connected, uh, ended up being connected to rooms or to maybe to other parts of the spaghetti. Um, so we're gonna go, um, if we found it, we're gonna go, we're gonna go canned, we're gonna add this to a list of candidates.
Okay. Um, so for what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna for a C in all can't do and and we're gonna go and set we're just gonna set c dot x c c dot y we are just gonna mark those tiles with this with our beautiful um, bluish gray um, and we're not gonna loop actually we're just gonna do this loop once to see if this marks our dead ends correctly and so the only thing I'm gonna change I'm gonna change this kind of car function where where is it and just make sure that it checks for inbounds, but it doesn't actually check if it's walkable. Uh, and we're gonna use this is walkable uh, outside of the can carve function. So here's can carve, and if not can carve, so we're gonna say if not is walkable and not can carve. Uh, let's 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 do it like this. If not, open brackets and be like can uh, is walkable and can carve. And not is walkable. <laughs> so if it's not walkable and is it's can and you can carve it and that's not the case. <laughs> Gosh, this is complicated. It made everything so complicated. <laughs> Um, but that's it, yeah. And then can carve, we're not using can carve here. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so let's see if that works. Uh, 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 we didn't close the... Come on, man, give me, give me a break. Just for once, just work, man. Just work with me. Um, maybe uh, in this case, uh, I'm not sure why, why it's not working. Out of memory. Oh, it actually worked. It, it just didn't work. <laughs> okay, it actually worked. Uh, wait a minute. So let's see it's CLS. Oh, it works. Okay, never mind. It's fine. It's fine. Um, so let me set the map to visible so we can see what's happening. Uh, I, although I'm, I'm worried that it is. I'm worried. Mm, blank map zero. It just takes takes a couple of seconds. So here it it marked some dead ends. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's already started them filling them back in because it put like a wall there. But we maybe want to just like mark mark a dead end. So let's 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 put a seventeen in there. I wonder why it's set out of memory. But but we're not repeating everything here. So worried, worried. Oh, I know why why this might be the case. Oh, this is now taking some time. Oh. So generally, um, this process, if it takes that much, uh, uh, that long, that long of a time, that suggests to me that something is wrong. Something should be wrong because it shouldn't take this 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 huge amount of time. Yeah. Yeah, this is not good. Ah, okay, it, it worked once now. So we see, it, generally it works, like it, it recognized all the dead ends that start to be filling in. You see the red dots are everywhere where there's a dead end. It should fill in this back in and it will arrive here and it will stop filling this back in. It should also start filling this back in all the way down here um, and it should fill. So generally it works. It's just like it's somehow we slowed down everything to a crawl. 
Um, and so we kind of have to figure out what the culprit is. I have two theories. Either it's our maze worm that somehow through this like, huge mess that we made down there uh, made everything uh, crazy, or the fill ends, um, this fill ends function is also kind of like maybe some, something is wrong. I'm gonna make them both, comment them both out. And you can see everything is very, very fast now. Okay, so I'm gonna bring back the maze worm. And that took a while. Now this takes a long time, yeah. So the maze worm now no longer works correctly, apparently. The, the way we did the, the way we uh, changed the can car function broke our maze worm. So um, let me think about this. So is walkable is fine. Get sick, this is good. Then we have dig worm and then this part. So this is apparently something that that we did not do correctly. Ah, I see the problem already. So this is walkable thing here. Um, that is, we didn't add the dear X to it. And I don't want to do that actually. So hmm, let me think about. It. So I'm 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 having a different idea. So let's so let's say something like this. Let's make the can car function something that that requires a third argument. Uh huh. And here in the can can car function is we're gonna do something like check. Um, check walk, check if it's walkable. <laughs> and then we're gonna go uh, if in bounds and so how do, are we going to do this? If in bounds and check walk and um, is walkable x y and not is walkable check x y. So if check walk is set to true um, and is walkable, then it will check if if um, if we make sure that that uh, and the tile that we're looking at for the can car function if that's actually walkable and otherwise it won't do that. And so this allows us to use the same can can car function now. There is a bit of a hack. I don't like it, but um, so we, here we can go false. Uh, no, we can go. Tr yeah, we can, we can go false here. And then up there, we're going to in the warm function, we can go true. A bit of a hack. Don't like it. But where is it? Warm function. There is warm function. If oh wait a minute, there's two can carves here. That might have caused the problem as well. Ha <laughs> ha um, So here we're gonna go true, and here true. Yeah, that 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 makes sense. Why it caused so many problems? Okay, let's try that. Okay, pressing buttons. That's uh, acceptable. That's an acceptable delay. Oh, out of memory. So there's a bit of a problem. Like we seem to have a memory leak apparently. Uh, if we keep bashing this button, we're filling apparently some kind of array with stuff and we're never deleting that array. And we eventually run out of memory. Yeah, there we go. So we have to f look for the leak. Probably what happened here is we're probably creating some kind of um, array somewhere and we never delete that array. <laughs> um, so maybe some kind of candidates or doors or something that we that um, that we, maybe they were not clear as a local variable, but as a as a global variable. Is what I'm thinking.
many months later. So I'm still looking for this. This uh, this will be a bit of an exploration here. Um, but one way of, of maybe finding the culprit, which of these functions is responsible for this calamity, would be maybe to, uh, to show you how much memory we're using. So we're going to go debug uh, one equals stat zero. Stat zero returns how much memory we're using. So you can see if I press this button, <laughs> we immediately run out of memory. Can I press it? Okay, so we're 83, 73, 82, 94, 73. It gets down again. 107, 86. So sometimes we run out of memory. So we're getting down again. Okay, so now I'm going to like start commenting out some of the functions and see which function is responsible for this calamity. Two thousand years later. So I'm hmm, I'm still not exactly sure why this is happening, but I might have an idea, um, especially if I compare it to what I had before. Um, so let me try the following change here. Um, so again, like if starting here, um, you see that's you know, usually it works, but sometimes the memory requirements shoot up through the roof and um, Lua crashes or Pico 8 crashes. Um, like for example, here, yep, yeah, now it we crashed. Um, and I know I, I was able to track down to the, the two functions that caused this. These are carve doors and carve S cuts, which makes sense because they are very similar functions. We base them off the same same template. And they are definitely very, um, especially the S-cuts because it cre always creates a distance map and that's a lot. Um, and also this one because it uses the grow flag. So that's also, mm. um, but something we can do here, which I, I think helps, I'm not sure. Like if there's some Lua experts out there and watching this, maybe you have some ideas. Um, this DRS uh, array, uh, so and what I'm, I'm, I'm going to do here, I'm, I'm going to actually um, not going to define it inside the loop, but outside the loop. So I'm going to do something like DRS. So here inside the loop, we just clear the array uh, and we not define it. We, uh, it might have to do like with garbage collection and stuff like stuff like that. Um, I think it works better, but it's, I don't see like a radical improvement. And it's kind of like the bug doesn't repro reproduce. Uh, that consistently, so I'm not exactly sure if that's the problem. Um, but yeah, if you do this like this, we are getting better results. One eternity later. It's one of those things, guys. It's one of those things. Um, so yeah, sometimes also I have get flustered a little bit and kind of like to, I'm not really sure what to do things, uh, how to do things. Um, but I've been d doing some investigation and so look what I kind of setup I have here, kind of like to figure out what the problem is, which of the function is causing this issue. I've narrowed it down that it's probably carve doors or carve s cuts, but I wasn't really sure. So what I did is like I'm setting a color for a, for a text and I'm printing the stat zero out and then do the flip. We did that, we remember, we did that when we do the pause stuff uh, where we pause the game for a couple of, um, a couple of frames. Um, kind, of, kind of doing the same thing where I kind of, um, before I continue generating the level, I print this on the screen. The flip actually prints the screen, it actually shows us the screen because if I did it be, be without the flip, uh, you wouldn't see the print un until we get to the back to the draw function, I guess. So yeah, if I do this, you will see numbers popping up of the memory usage of the individual functions after each individual function was executed. And everything seems fine, except the second function kind of takes takes its sweet time sometimes. It kind of takes its sweet time and when it takes a really sweet long amount of time, then it usually crashes. There. You see that the second number didn't show up. 
instead it went in out of memory. So something suggests to me that in the second function, in the carved doors function, that was the one, the function that took its sweet time, that sometimes it takes a lot of time and then uh, Pico 8 runs out of memory. Weird. Why? So I've been looking through this and comparing to my old code a little bit. And sometimes it's like really little details that, that kind of make the difference. I remember when I coded the first time, I also had like the same issue actually. It just um, manifested itself differently. It just like, it just took a bunch of time to do certain things. Um, the issue is funny enough with, um, with the grow, with a grow flag function. With this function? Really? Really? This is the problem? Yeah, it is a problem. So um, if you step through this process a little bit, you think about this. So what we're doing here, we, are, we have a list of candidates. Okay. We're looping through the list of candidates. Um, and for every candidate, we look at the neighbors. And if we found a neighbor that is walkable and whose flag hasn't been set yet, or whose flag isn't the flag that we want to have. Then we put that candidate on the list. And in the next loop, we, um, we grab that candidate, right? We, we paint that candidate, the f we set the flag, um, the flag of that candidate. Um, but if you think about this, if you just imagine yourself like a wave of candidates rolling across the map, and each candidate is looking at his neighbors and, and you know, if the neighbor is not changed then it puts it in a list of the next candidates. Uh, what it does is like, because we are just adding the candidates to the list but we're not changing anything about the flag, a given tile can sometimes be marked as a candidate by two di from two, two different neighbors. You know, one neighbor might be looking, oh, the, the tile to my left to the tile to my left is uh, it doesn't have the right flag yet. Let's put that in our candidates list for the next time. And then the tile underneath also looks at their neighbors and like, oh, the, the tile ab above has been set and it puts like a duplicate candidate on that list. It's not a big deal. Like it doesn't break anything. It works fine. It just like it creates a bunch of double candidates on, on our list of, of tiles to be filled. Um, so what we want to have is actually want to um, if a tile has been put on the candidates list, it should not uh, um, be marked by another tile that is looking for candidates. So what we have to do here is we have to take this part where we set the flag and we put it actually here. The moment we find a tile that doesn't have the right flag, we immediately put the flag in it. So it cannot be found as a possible candidate by some other process later on down the line. And of course we have to do dx and dy like this and that means that you know if we're going through this and some other tile finds this tile it will realize okay this is actually has been already taken care of moving on next next problem right uh, so the other problem here is we want to have um, canned um, there's there's yeah, the we have to set the flag of our um, of our starting location so we're gonna go flags um, x why we don't have to, but it will speed things up a tiny little bit. So we might have, we might just as well, something like this. If you run this now, you will see this is a lot faster now. The second part is a lot faster now because this this uh, looking for um, this flag growing goes a lot faster now, and we don't have the memory issues anymore. And the memory issues arrive because um, you have to imagine like once the, the, all the areas are connecting with each other, you have like this one situation at some point where it's like the two last areas have to connect with each other. So you have like, you know, one area, and then there's like a breakthrough between like the door is being breaking through. And then we're using the grow flag function to spread this new, um, this new flag in this huge, gigantic new area. And, you know, going through these areas, depending on the geometry of the area, we might get in situations where a lot of duplicates of individual tiles are being created and there's no really, no good process of removing them. And we create such a big um, array of candidates that Lua can't handle this anymore. And, uh, and, and gives up and, and run out of memory. But again, if we do this like this, it seems to be working. I'm not, I'm not seeing that, that issue again. I was hoping to do some more stuff today, but now I spent such a long time fixing this one problem. 
but I think like uh, um, so let me let us just maybe finish up the, this fill ends here that's something that we were work actually working on so we already said that uh, the fill ends function is working correctly the fill ends are being recognized correctly let's just remove the debugging information we don't need that anymore I hopefully we don't need that anymore hopefully we don't need that anymore did you hear me Lua we don't need that anymore um it did not fill the ends. What did I do wrong? Uh, we should see the dots. 17. I definitely see. Is it because of our... Is it because of our can car function? Of our new broken can car function, something is wrong. Uh, it occurred to me that we can make this car function even simpler. So <clears throat> instead of this to being like, we just pass on what um, is walkable should be uh, for this. Let, let me let me explain it real quick. Can carve. Let's go back to the can carve function. I'm I'm swimming. I'm swimming. This is this is this is this is a nightmare. I'm cringing myself. Um, let's call this walk. So if, if in bounds and check uh, is is walkable equals walk. Let's just make it like this. And is walkable equal, equals walk. That's it. So this is just basically the third parameter is basically what uh, if whether this um, this tile that we're looking for is walkable or not, and that's it. And then here, when we're actually looking for them, we can go if walkable is false, we're looking for not walkable because we do here is the worm at, at work false. Um, let me see what kind of is car function we have here. If true, okay. These are D two. These two. Okay, so let's try this now. Okay, now it works. Oh, I'm so relieved. I was like, ah. <laughs> okay, so we have like no <clears throat> those ends here, and to finish this up, uh, we can now start filling them in. So instead of filling them with a red uh, part, we just fill them with with a wall, like this, and then we keep repeating this this entire thing until. And then now let's let's make it. It's probably not necessary, but you know, it's never 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 hurts. So we repeat this entire process until um, there are no candidates, there are no dead ends for us anymore. And then that means that we uh, we filled all of the dead ends. So you see now we're getting a lot cleaner looking dungeons with a, a lot less you know crazy shenanigans going on a lot less spaghetti basically all the spaghetti is kind of like rolled back on, on onto itself uh, and we may we're we just left with like very clean and, and simple hallways maybe that's something that you don't want to have maybe you want to have like those nook and crannies then that's fine and you you do you you do you out there um but I, I think for me that that's fine. I, I think it's fine to have some negative space, some places where there's nothing, so the player cannot really expect like every part of the um, area to be filled in. Okay. Very long episode today. It was a nightmare, guys. I have, I've, I've been, it will be edited a huge chunk of that video out, but uh, and of course, like it's scary to see something like you know, oh, out of out of memory. <gasps> you know, that seems like, a, like such a such a serious such a, such a serious problem. But yeah, on the next episode, we are going to start placing our entrance and exit. Um, so this, you know, turns the entire level and then we can start actually going through the individual floors. Um, so again, the code for this, this uh, adventure uh, is going to be down there, downstairs in doobly-doo and there's also going to be by um, OMG Mog and the GitHub the repository that you also, also check out. Uh, as always, check out the t-shirts and not this t-shirt that no good t-shirts and um check out the discord see you next episode bye bye guys